look like a real bride. Or as best of a bride as I can be with what I already own. This is just a headpiece. It has clips right here and this actually goes like that, but I've moved it this way to make it look like a wedding headband. I already had these um, not real pearls, not real pearls, but still looked beautiful because I don't have any other silvery jewelry, but pearls go with weddings too, so it's perfect. It's gonna be perfect. Ah, you would know that song if you had seen the show. I wish it was acceptable to wear this without people thinking I'm getting married every day. We're back behind the green screen for day six of Me, Myself, and I. I am dressed like a bride because of the song that I just did. And if you don't understand why, I really encourage that you see the show that this song is from. It's called It Should Have Been You. It's on YouTube as far as I uh, know. When I watched it, it was an illegal bootleg, but how was I supposed to see it when it was on Broadway? I live in California. I won't say I'm sorry for watching it because there's so many shows that I've watched through bo bootlegs because I don't want to watch a movie version or um, there just aren't pro shots. So I want to be able to know what the story is about. I went through a good few months where I was absolutely obsessed with Sierra Bogus after I watched the 25th anniversary of Phantom, which I somehow hadn't seen until 2020. I, I, did, I didn't know it existed for some reason. I don't know why. But anyway, if you don't know who she is, she's probably one of the most famous names in musical theater. She did the 25th anniversary of Phantom that I just talked about in the Royal Albert Hall, which is one of the largest stages in the world. I got completely obsessed. I looked into every show that she has done, and this was one of them. And I don't want this to just be me gushing about Sierra, although that's very easy for me to do. She plays this character in the show, It Should Have Been You, she plays the bride, and I do not want to give the story away, but if you've seen it already, or if you don't mind being spoiled, here's a spoiler warning now. Part of the plot of the show is that she is with her I think it's her best friend. I haven't seen it in a while. I think it's her best friend or a friend. They had a pact. And the only way that her friend was going to be able to receive his inheritance was when he got married to a woman. But uh, both of them are not attracted to the opposite sex. So this poses a problem, but also a solution. The solution is that they put on a show, marry each other, for the look of it so that he can get his inheritance. So she helps him out. But while this is all happening, her very Jewish family, who she thinks that would not accept her, are very much thinking, Ugh, shouldn't have been this guy. It should have been this other guy. It should have been this other guy. What is this hair? There. No. Get you on. Okay. Ha! <laughs> so it's like, oh, it, it should have been you. It should have been you. This other guy who ends up playing a different role in the story, but it's not applicable to the song. The song that she is singing is one that she sings to her sister who helped set up this entire wedding because she was the maid of honor and she's her sister. She walks in on her kissing her actual girlfriend, which throws her for a total loop. She's completely flabbergasted. She had no idea that her sister was attracted to women and not to men. So she sings this song to her sister because she couldn't bring up the courage to come out to her family for so long. And they had this kind of pact, so it kind of kept her in the closet. The show and the song are such an inspiration to those in the LGBTQ plus community. And although I don't personally consider myself completely part of the community, I do consider myself a supporter of anyone who wants to love who they want to love. Loving who you want to love, I feel like is a human right. And who you are attracted to is who you are attracted to. If your feelings differ on that, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. Who people love should not and does not affect you. And if you think that it does, it shouldn't. And that's all that I'll say on that. I know I have family members that will differ with me on this. Because I'm kind of the black sheep of the family when it comes to um, a lot of things. If you're in a safe position to be able to feel like you can be free 
say how you feel. I encourage you to do so so that you don't feel like you're living a lie. Do what feels right for you is all I can say. I'm not going to tell you to do something you're not comfortable with, but if you need inspiration, if you need courage, this song is the perfect one. And to get on to the actual word of the day, the word is weight. People would expect a song about body image or body weight to go with this um, in Carrie Hope Fletcher's version of this video. Instead of talking about physical weight, she talks about conversations that have weight. And I don't think there's a conversation that bears more weight in today's society than coming out in any capacity, anything unconventional, especially to families and people that may not be as accepting of it. So I think my role with this video is to introduce you to an amazing musical, but also to a song that can be inspiring to you. It doesn't have to apply to orientation. It can apply to beliefs. If you come from a religious family like I did, it can apply to coming out as not religious, which was something I did. I think the biggest theme is breaking away from the fear of the situation that you were in, no matter what it is. It's the fear that you will be ostracized. It's the fear that you will not be accepted. It's the fear that you will be hated and ridiculed and thought a little bit less than. But there are those out there that will think the world of you. And I don't think there's anything that holds more weight than that. I'll see you tomorrow.